atmosphere are even higher than they were 125,000 years ago, higher than they've ever been in the last half million years. Temperatures are already following suit. The only explanation is the burning of fossil fuels. What we see in this ice core is very solid evidence that what's happening today in the atmosphere is different. It's not uh, a normal part of the climate cycle. It's something caused by human beings. Rising temperatures are once again pushing Greenland towards a major meltdown. But what the ice cores can't tell us is how long it will take. The last time Greenland lost a significant portion of its ice, White suspects it happened over thousands of years. But this time, it could happen much faster. And here we are now, fiddling with the dials of the climate machine, not quite knowing what's going to happen. And we know from these past records that the climate system can come up and bite us hard. So far, global warming is biting hardest at the fringes of Greenland's ice sheet. Ringing the island are hundreds of outlet glaciers that act like pipes, draining the interior ice sheet out to sea through narrow fjords. In the late 1990s, many of these spigots began gushing more ice. One of the largest, Jakobshavn, is now pumping out over 40 billion tons of icebergs each year, more than any other glacier in the Northern Hemisphere. These icebergs reach the open ocean at Disco Bay. In this deceptively peaceful icecape, James Baylog is on the hunt for giant bergs. Some of these blocks of ice rise over 300 feet above the waterline, but 90% of their mass is hidden below. Oh my god, these things are gigantic. If they roll over, we'll be swimming with the fishes. But right in here, there's this line of jewels as, they, as you come around the arc of this berg, and all the water drops are coming in, and uh, the sun makes this fantastic necklace of jewelry along the edge of this. Oh, man, I can't, there, let's do it again. There's something, there's something in there. It's making me crazy, actually, because the, this there's a picture in here. There's definitely a picture in here. Wow, that was amazing. Thirty-five miles up the fjord from Disco Bay, Baylog's time-lapse cameras are stationed above the cabbing face to capture Jakob Schavin's every move. Baylog has teamed up with glaciologist Jason Box, who has been keeping a close watch on Jakobshavn and other glaciers along the coast for the past 14 years. The Jakobshavn Glacier is the king of glaciers in Greenland. It produces by far more icebergs and more ice flow than any other single glacier. This is really where the rubber hits the road in terms of sea level rise. Glaciers are, of course, very dynamic systems, but you don't really see that when you sit there and stare at them. We're able to observe with the time-lapse cameras at a much higher frequency, like every hour, whereas from satellite, you can only observe the glacier every 10 days or so. What they are finding is that the ice is far more sensitive to temperature changes than they thought. 
During the summer melt season, Jakobshavn is now moving at a clip of 130 feet per day, almost twice as fast as a decade ago. The faster it goes, the more pressure builds up behind the glacier's 400-foot-high calving face. This triggers more frequent and explosive calving events. In the spring of 2008, Baylog's team was staking out Jakobshavn and got lucky, capturing the largest calving event ever filmed. In the space of about an hour, a section of ice as wide as Manhattan sheared off the glacier. We've underestimated the sensitivity of these systems. We are approaching the threshold of viability for the Greenland ice sheet, and that's when the melting occurs high enough on the ice sheet that no matter how much snow accumulates, um, there's net loss every year. Greenland is already losing 150 billion tons more ice every year than it gains in snowfall. As temperatures go up in the coming decades, even more ice will be lost. The hard part is figuring out how much and how fast. There's big questions now that we didn't think we were gonna have to solve. They're hard questions. Ultimately, you crank up the temperature in the air and the ice sheet notices and it flows faster and it raises sea level. But how fast and how much are questions that really we don't have answers to. Some of those answers may be hidden deep under the ice. The summer melt season on the Greenland ice sheet has grown hotter and is now two weeks longer than it was only a decade ago. Rivers of meltwater cut deep into the ice, creating a serpentine canyon that winds for miles. one of the most exceptional landscapes I've ever seen in my life. You know, this looks so much like those incredible canyons out in the sandstone country in Utah. And you have that, except it's sculpted out of ice. It's like this huge, incredible cake sculpted by this river in here. And it's like, the world isn't supposed to look like this. As the summers heat up, features like this ice canyon are becoming more pronounced. But for all its beauty, it raises perplexing questions about the effect this water is having underneath the skin of the ice sheet. The strangest phenomenon is the mystery of the meltwater lakes. As the ice sheet cooks down, the meltwater collects in depressions in the ice forming thousands of lakes, some over several miles wide and nearly 50 feet deep. From satellite images, scientists noticed that in midsummer, many of these lakes vanished overnight, leaving bright circles where the water once stood. Until recently, it was assumed that the water was absorbed and refrozen into the ice sheet. But Ian Jockin and Sarah Das have a hunch that the water could be having a deeper impact. These events are so unpredictable, nobody has ever observed them. But Das and Jockin just came close. A few days ago, a big lake by their camp suddenly drained out. We were in the fog, so we couldn't see the whole lake. While standing right on the shore of the water, we started to hear some really loud booms and pops. And it was just extremely spooky. Cracks would run across the ground beneath your feet. It was all around you. Um, it, was, it was a strange experience. <laughs> Frightening, but also fortuitous. They had placed a device that measures water pressure called a pressure logger in the bottom of the lake, hoping it might drain. If they can find the logger, 
their bet might pay off. The fish line that we're following, it's tied at one end to our stations, and it's tied at the other end to an old plastic bottle that has a pressure logger attached to it, and that's sitting in the lake basin. And so we're following the line out, hoping that at the end we'll find it tied off to our loggers. The loggers should reveal exactly when and how fast the lake drained. Everywhere, truck-sized blocks of ice litter the lake bed, evidence of the violent forces uncorked as the water rushed out. I see hey, it. there Look it is. With the loggers in hand, they can now plot out the minute-by-minute -minute account of the mass draining of the lake. So what you see here on the left is um, early June when there's no water in the lake. And as more water fills the lake, the pressure goes up, the height of the water column goes up and up, up, continue to fill, 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 till about this point. And then on July 10th, boom, you see the lake drop in a matter of about 40 minutes. GPS data reveals that so much water drained out so quickly, the surrounding ice was pushed up by several feet. Well, as you can see from the blocks all around us, it, uh, it's a tremendously violent event. You have a lake that's two miles wide, 40 feet deep, and all of a sudden it drops 3,000 feet through the ice. It would have basically been one of the tallest waterfalls in the world. Uh, the flow into these cracks in the, in the lake bed is greater than the flow over Niagara Falls. Instead of being absorbed and refrozen into the surface ice, they discovered that the water dropped all the way to the bedrock. There, it lifts and lubricates the ice sheet and accelerates its slide. And if you have increased warming, especially in the summertime, over the ice sheet, you're going to just increase the supply of meltwater to the bed. And potentially, that could escalate the speed up. Their breakthrough solves the mystery of the meltwater lakes. They'd measured it, but because of the fog, they hadn't seen it happen. By sheer chance, the very next morning, Baylog and the scientists would witness it firsthand. About a mile away from his camp, a smaller lake that was full only hours before suddenly starts to drain. Baylog heads for the water line to try to find where the water is going. This is the world's most treacherous footing. These wave cups are hard walking as it is, and with them just emerged out of the lake, they're slick as can be. There's, there's so much water packed in there. It's just like grease on top of glass. up here is one of the scariest, dumbest things I've done in my life. Where I'm laying right now was underwater just six hours ago. You know, there was a lake here, and the water depth of the lake was a, roughly 20 feet right here. And all of that from, that was overhead six hours ago is drained out and poured down this hole. And I can see maybe 250, 300 feet down there. I'm not feeling real comfortable out here. This is really the first time that we've been able to observe these things firsthand actually happening. And it's really nice to see that our theories that we've pulled together from our instrumental records match our observations on the ground very nicely. Now they know. These billions of gallons of water are finding a route under the ice and out to sea, lubricating the outlet glaciers and making them speed up. Das and Jochen calculate that this lubrication effect accounts for about 10% of the increase in speed. So there must be another powerful force behind the surge of ice from Greenland. The latest ocean research may have found it. Around 1997, there was an abrupt three degree Fahrenheit jump in coastal water temperatures, 
exactly when the outlet glaciers began to speed up. At the foot of Jakobshavn Glacier in Disco Bay, Ian Howitt is investigating how the warming ocean could be eating away at the edges of the ice sheet. I'm trying to get a handle on how the ocean and the ice interact. And so by that, I mean how heat is transferred from the ocean, which is this huge source of heat, up against this ice sheet. Okay, open up. 